there's been something I haven't been able to figure out, right? Something that's been bothering me this whole uh, the past couple weeks around the election. And maybe we can figure it out through this. So Democrats have all been riding with Biden now, but that wasn't always the case. Vice President Biden, you're just simply inaccurate in what you're describing. We will ensure that everyone has access to health care. Your plan, by contrast, leaves out almost 10 million Americans. President, you can't have it both ways. You invoke President Obama more than anybody in this campaign. You can't do it when it's convenient right. and then dodge it when it's not. When you said when a woman works outside the home, it's resulting in, quote, the deterioration of family. No, what and I... that we are avoiding, these are quotes. It was the title of the op-ed. During the Democratic primary, challengers took shot at whoever was on top of the polls until that leader started to come down and that challenger started to rise. And Biden was no exception to this. And things started to really go bad for the uh, former vice president after this. We begin with Bernie's big win. Senator Bernie Sanders taking the Nevada Democratic Caucus. We have a projected winner tonight that's just in right now. ABC News reporting. Bernie Sanders, according to the vote that has been reported by New Hampshire, he's the projected winner tonight. And so after the first couple of states called their primaries, it all came down to South Carolina for Biden's campaign. And really, it came down to one Democratic congressman. Congressman Jim Clyburn had to make a choice. He could support the other Democrats who seemed to be taking away with the nomination, or he could save Biden's campaign. And here is what he chose to do. We know Joe, but most importantly, Joe knows us. That's right. That Biden went on to win the Democratic nomination, you know, with some help from maybe the party, but that's all another story. Democrats then all came together. Uh, liberals, progressives, and moderates to beat Trump. And they did, you know, despite uh, whatever his uh, election kind of, you know, all that, uh, all that all that stuff he's trying to spin about election fraud, Joe Biden did win the election. And, you know, they did. And all Democrats and, you know, everyone on the left all came together. And, but in the long run, is that actually going to hurt Democrats? We keep making that mistake, this foolishness, about you got to be this progressive or that progressive. That phrase, defund the police, cost Jamie Harrison tremendously. Now, I'm not saying it was the only problem. You sound kind of mad, Congressman. It sounds like you're blaming the more... Yes, that is uh, Congressman Clyburn on Axios talking about how the party moving so far to the left moving so progressive may have hurt them in the long run. Now, he was very uh, keen to not blame progressives, but he said that you have to be realistic in the district that you're in. And so Democrats won the presidency, they lost, but they lost seats in the House, and they're probably going to lose the Senate. So by not pushing back on some of the more progressive ideas like defund the police, Medicare for all, packing the court, and of course the, the big boogeyman there, socialism, did that ultimately end up costing Democrats in the long run? Because Biden will more than likely have a divided government to deal with, so a lot of his, uh, his uh, policy uh, positions that he wants to go forward with probably aren't going to happen if Democrats take both Senate seats in, in Georgia. So a, a tremendous amount to unpack there. Um, you know, start back at the primaries where we see um, Biden, you know, under attack in the debates, he was always going to be, uh, you know, one of the guys to go after. Uh, we saw Bernie Sanders winning those races and then, you know, you see this enormous shift after that South Carolina primary. But, uh, you know, fact of the matter is, is there's there's more, uh, you know, votes there, you know, in, in South Carolina. There's, you know, greater electoral college value and greater popular vote value. You know, uh, 
Bernie Sanders was relying on turning out primarily young voters, a harder turnout group, predominantly young white voters, didn't have great outreach to uh, black voters who are, you know, uh, one of the, the one of, if not the, the strongest pillar of the Democratic Party, um, you know. And I hate Joe Biden. He was talking to Cardi B, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Joe Biden made made the outreach. Um, you know, of course, as Cory Booker said, you know, he got his his uh, chance to, to mention Barack Obama's name every possible chance he could. Uh, but, you know, Biden is, uh, you know, he's a guy who's been in the party a long time. He's been in, in politics a long time. He got, uh, you know, Clyburn on his side, uh, who people say, you know, may just be the, the last true kingmaker in politics. And uh, you don't get to be a kingmaker by being part of the progressive wing or part of the, the more right wing you know, you, you have to be at the center of the party. Um, you know, if you're looking at somebody who's the offshoots, you know, that's going to be more like the, the Freedom Caucus, which just have power, but certainly not that much. Or, you know, AOC and the squad, uh, you know, nothing like the political power that um, Representative Clyburn has. Um, but obviously, you know, I mean, the, the guy is, is not progressive um, by the, the standards, you know, we're going to, you know, use for the average politician. Um, so, you know, breaking all of that down, but, uh, I think when we talk about whether, whether progressive policies cost Democrats in this election, and I think there's two ways to look at it. There's representative Clyburn saying, um, you know, the, the phrase defund the police hurt Jamie Harrison, stuff like that. People I mean, saying that horrible, uh, they, they should have figured out a way to put that a little bit better. Right. I mean, that it's an unpopular slogan Reform to be the sure. police uh, has a good ring to it. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, for a lot of people, it's, um, you know, come in asking for $100, talk them down to 50 for something you paid for 25 you know? Uh, I think that's that's where a lot of people start with the defund the police. Cause, yeah, you know, you buy it at 25 you want to... You, know, you say, hey, you can buy it off of me for 100 but, you know, you, they talk you down to 50 They think they got a great deal. Uh, but in reality, you know, you doubled what you made. Uh, so I, I think, you know, if we're looking at just that, we're saying, did, did these uh, more progressive ideas, did these more socialist ideas hurt Democrats who weren't running on them? That is um, going to be a very hard to answer question. Um, but we are seeing, you know, pushback to that. We are seeing people saying, well, you know, I live in South Carolina. That's not the, what attack ads on Jamie Harrison focused on. Um, you know, a lot of them are saying, you know, I don't think it cost him that much. You know, they're saying that's not even what Republicans focused on attacking him for. Um, and if we look the other half of this, if we look on who actually ran on those progressive ideas, for all of the, the Green New Deal supporters, um, you know, who are running for office this time around, I think one loss and something like over 101 reelection. Uh, so, no, I don't, I don't think these these progressive ideas hurt the Democratic Party. Obviously, if you're in a progressive area, run progressive campaign. Um, I think James Clyburn is, you know, again, he's at the center of the party. You know, you're not going to hear uh, a lot of uh, progressive support from Clyburn, even though, you know, he might be the last, you know, kingmaker in politics. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. It seems like Trump's positioned himself to be a kingmaker. We'll see. But, you know, I, yeah, I can agree I with mean, some of that and some of what you're saying. But in general, I am also very, you know, I try to pay attention to both sides. I try to see what Republicans are talking about. Um, and a lot of folks who were Republican anyway, they were going to, they were, I mean, they weren't going to jump on any of these democratic liberal ideas i mean they could democrats could be positioning so total socialism and that's not what they're doing but it doesn't matter to republicans that we're going to support them anyway because they're democrats but i did have to wonder if people on the fringes you know i saw a lot of folks talking about okay maybe i like some of the democratic stuff but i i don't like all the looting i don't like all the rioting and all this stuff i don't like the defund the police stuff um it's just kind of like it allows conservatives and Republicans to paint the Democratic Party as batshit crazy. And that, um, from a lot of folks, 
who don't pay attention to politics, who don't look into politics, that could be a very effective message. Yeah, um, I mean, to that point, though, you have, you know, Better O'Rourke saying, you know, they're going to come out and they're going to call us socialists. They're going to tar us with every name you can think possible. Uh, so why not run on what we want to run on? Why not run on what we think makes the country better? Because regardless of how socialist our par party is, how uh, socialist our policies are, they're still going to get tarred that same way. So, you know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's like you said, you could, you could be offering total socialism and uh, Republicans would treat it the same way they, they do any other uh, democratic policy. You know, um, I think you're going to get tarred with that no matter what you're doing. So I think and Democrats, you know, I, is... I, I believe in what uh, O'Rourke said, you know, swing for the fences, run on what you want to run on. You know, if it works, it works. But, you know, don't allow that uh, that criticism to weigh you down. It's one of those things. And I definitely agree. That's probably that's how it should be. I mean, absolutely. There's no there's no really debating that. I kind of think back to um, something Rick Wilson said, and he's part of the Lincoln Party now. I like Lincoln Project now, excuse me. Um, and it's one of those interesting kind of things. Lincoln Project have been working on wanting to do a segment around them because in some ways they're, they're now to fight Trump, but they're kind of fighting the beast that they helped create. But the thing is with them, uh, he said, late Rick Wilson said that the problem with Democrats is they're they're running boutique ads in a Walmart country. You know? Like, people aren't really looking into that stuff that deeply, right? That, uh, you know, they're not really trying to figure out all these issues. Like, for a lot of Americans, it's just about, like, okay, how much money am I bringing home? What are my taxes like? It's all about them. And even Beto, I mean, he, he shot for the 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 rooftops when he said okay we're gonna oh, hell yeah we're gonna come take your guns and that kind of ended his political career and so i'm definitely uh, with the idea of that like, okay we should try to be all about our platform all about our ideas but practically like how is you have to understand like how is that gonna f gonna be a good message for the democratic party moving forward because it's hard to argue with the results now i mean there's the pandemic there's Trump, there's the chaos of the last four years, and when it's all said and done, Democrats lost seats. So, I, again, a, a lot to break down, but on the, the last point, I would say, you know, they picked up a historic number of seats in the, the last election. You know, they had, you know, a blue wave, and again, this time, I think we saw a blue wave, but... We also saw a red wave at the same time. We saw a historic uh, turnout for both parties. So I think uh, a bit harder to quantify the results of this election. Um, but I, um, I think that, you know, um, AOC came out and said, you know, of the, the candidates who took our help, you know, pretty much all, but all of them won. I think the, the problem for the Democratic Party is not messaging. I don't think that's their issue. I think their issue is campaigning. I think their issue is um, maybe putting out their message. And, uh, you know, when they have a popular um, policy, getting people to realize, hey, this is just free money or free puppies or whatever. You know, it's not what Fox News is telling you. It's not this, it's not that. This will help you. It's not going to negatively affect things. I think they need to do a better job of that. But um, I think, you know, they have much larger issues with campaigning than they do with progressive policies. You know, I mean, AOC was saying like, you know, look, we would have we come to you, giving you free help, you know, even if you didn't want me there personally, if you didn't want my name on anything, you know, I would have, you know, given you digital help, given you help, you know, knocking on doors. Um, but you know, if you're going to, you're going to turn down help, you're going to turn down help. Um, also, you know, with Beto, I don't think his political career is over by any means. Um, you know, we, we've seen a lot of talk about him in Texas, uh, considering the guy wasn't running and Texas really wasn't that close in the end. Um, but I think, you know, he, he showed that uh, during his run, that turning out Democratic voters helped him a whole lot more than trying to convert uh, conservative leaning independents did in Texas. Uh, very similar to Karl Rove's strategy that formed the 
modern Republican Party of diverting away from independence and towards the base, uh, focusing on turning out that base, turning out those numbers, getting people who don't vote to vote. Uh, you know, I mean, of course, that's how we got the Republican Party we have today. So I don't know uh, how much we yeah. want to try have uh, Democrats try the same strategy. You know, things are pretty partisan as is. Um, and then uh, to, to your earliest point about the uh, the Lincoln Project, you know, him saying, uh, uh, you know, boutique messaging for a Walmart audience, uh, you know, the results the Lincoln Project got in this election, again, very hard to quantify things, uh, especially, you know, something like that in an election this large with such high turnout. But, uh, you know, they got very, very little uh, in the way of success of turning, you know, conservative leading independence uh, towards Biden compared to the efforts of Stacey Abrams in Georgia, you know, turning uh, Georgia blue since the first time since Clinton won Georgia, um, you know, much more effective getting those Democratic voters, you know, people who would vote Democrat to actually vote uh, seems to be much more successful seems more like the Lincoln Project was uh, trying to sell Cowboys jerseys in Philadelphia. Yeah, that, uh, with the number is definitely, you know, the ads are great. They put together great ads, but yeah, I wonder how effective they really were. Because, uh, yeah, yeah there's I mean, different I, messaging I think, for different parties, different people. Yeah, I think, I think never Trumpers like them. I think that um boomer democrats who are going to vote democrat no matter what uh like them but i don't think the ads did a very good job of convincing anybody to change their mind i think it was more for the uh you know the twitter crowd uh you know the the whole um you know inside baseball bunch yeah it definitely um you know, I, I like the ads they put together, but I just feel in this election, people were voting for their were voting for, and they figured that out months and months and months ago. But I still can't help but feel like, okay, they chose Biden as president, but they were like, we're not sold enough on the Democratic Party to give them, like, full control. And that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, the Lincoln Project, uh, now where does all that money they didn't spend go, you know? does Are we going to see them start funneling that into attacks on Biden in a couple of years from now or in the, the world we live in a couple of months? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to kind of uh, wait and see. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for watching Citizen Pete. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't already, click that little subscribe button, maybe the like button, and hey, Maybe, maybe, just leave a comment. You know, I want to know what you're thinking. What do you think about all politics and news and all the stuff that's going on in our country?